I want to look at the subject of um, eternal security today in our Bible Bite series. And of course, that's a big subject, and these meditations are brief, and um, so there's no thought of going into any detail on this. And really what I have in mind is I want to look at one verse in particular. I'll look at a few others, but one verse in particular that uh, we don't often associate with the doctrine of eternal security, but it really helps us to understand it. Uh, and that's in John's Gospel, chapter 14 and verse 19. That's the, the text for our meditation today. John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 19. The Lord Jesus told the disciples... Yet in a little while, and the world sees me no more, but you see me. Because I live, you shall live also. And the Lord was referring here to his death and resurrection, that the Lord would die, but he would be raised again. And the world would see him no more after his death, but the disciples would see him again. And But this uh, phrase, because I live, you shall live also. And in this verse, I see the doctrine of eternal security. Because the life that we have as Christians is the life of Christ. This is the life that has been imparted to us. It's eternal life, but it's the life of Christ. It's a new life. And this life cannot perish. Uh, if Christ can perish, if that life that he has now, uh, after the resurrection, can cease, then uh, the doctrine of eternal security, of course, then is not true. But it's impossible that he should die again. The scriptures are very clear about that. He's been raised in the power of an endless life. That life can't come to an end. And because that life can't come to an end, our salvation can't come to an end. You know, it says in the epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 11, and this is the record that God has given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. You see, the life is in the Son. It's the life of Christ, the resurrected one. And, and he can't die anymore. And because he can't die anymore, uh, and that life cannot cease to exist, therefore our salvation is eternal. In fact, the book of Hebrews speaks of that. It speaks of this eternal uh, redemption and this eternal salvation. On several occasions it speaks of it in those terms. In fact, I want to turn to the uh, epistle to the Hebrews and uh, look at a verse there. And that's Hebrews uh, chapter 7 and verse 25. And uh, in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, of course, is speaking of this uh, Melchizedek priesthood of Christ. And uh, the writer of the Hebrews uh, says this, Wherefore he, that is the Lord Jesus Christ, as the Melchizedek priest, as our great high priest, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost, or completely, that come unto God by him, seeing that he ever lives to make intercession for them. I want to read it. Uh, again, from the Darby translation, whence also he is able to save completely those who approach by him to God, always living to intercede for them. He's always living. He will never die again. Uh, this is a verse actually that's sometimes used uh, in connection with the gospel, that he can save those uh, to the uttermost who come unto God by him. But the thought here is not really uh, the unbeliever. The thought here is in connection with the believers. He's able to save us completely. Those who come to him, he can save completely because he lives forever and he will not die again and neither will we ever perish. He gives his life, uh, this eternal life to his sheep and they shall never perish. Now, in the historic doctrines of uh, Protestantism, uh, the Calvinistic doctrines, I should say, of the Reformation, there's a doctrine called the perseverance of the saints. And um, in fact, I think it's it's the P uh, in the, the tulip of, of, of Calvinistic uh, theology, uh, uh, the, the five points of Calvinism. And I have no problem with that doctrine uh, in and of itself. The fact that there, uh, the perseverance of the saints uh, <clears throat> on the face of it suggests that uh, every believer will ultimately be saved. No problem there. Uh, that goes right along with the doctrine of eternal security. It's just, in my mind, it's just another term for the same thing. But lo and behold, some say, who believe in um, this doctrine of the perseverance of the saints, who hold to the uh, strict views of the Calvinistic system, they say eternal security is false. In other words, they put sort of a, of a lack of assurance on it, that we have, 
a lot of it falls upon the believer that in the end we have to per persevere and if we haven't persevered in the end then it just turns out that we're never believers in the first place so in a sense it, it's sort of that um, uh, blessed unassurance doctrine uh, I cover some of this in my book uh, Lordship Salvation if you're interested you can get it through Believer's Bookshelf Canada or Believer's Bookshelf USA it's just simply called uh, Lordship Salvation by Brian Reynolds and I look at that whole idea of assurance and this doctrine of the perseverance of the saints but really when you come down to it it's not the perseverance of the saints okay it, it, it's it's not our persevering that keeps it it's it keeps us it's the preservation of the saints by a faithful great high priest and this is what we see in Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 and of course it's what we get uh, in our verse John chapter 14 uh, verse 19 that uh, because uh, you live uh, because I live rather you shall live also it's his life that we have and this life can never perish and so the believer can never perish and it's just amazing to me that those who uh, profess to, uh, to believe that the child of God will will uh, ultimately make it and will not perish at the same time will deny the doctrine of eternal security so uh, to me it's kind of baffling in a way and it puts it throws a lot back upon us rather upon the Lord than upon the Lord's grace it's our high priest that will save us completely and there's another verse a third verse in this regard we get in first uh, Peter uh, chapter 1 where Peter uh, speaks of the resurrection of Christ and, and our new birth. Uh, he says, Jesus Christ, who has been raised from the dead, to a, an incorruptible and undefiled and unfading inheritance reserved in the heavens for you. I should just read the whole verse, uh, starting verse 3, verse 3 and verse 4 of First Peter chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has begotten us again, that's the new birth, unto a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from among the dead. You see, this life after death, this, the life of Christ, the resurrection life of Christ, we, we've been born again. This is the life that we have. Notice, to uh, an incorruptible and undefiled, undefiled or, or um, unfading inheritance. In other words, now we have an inheritance waiting for us in the heaven. It's undefiled unfading uh, rust and moth can't corrupt it the Lord Jesus said it's unfading it's in the heaven uh, it's an inheritance but notice it's reserved there for you it's reserved there for the believer but then he goes on to say who are kept that is the believer who are kept guarded I'm reading now from the Darby translation because that gives the literal sense of the of the Greek here who are kept guarded by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed and this salvation he's speaking of is the final salvation the salvation of our bodies and resurrection and so on and being brought into our heavenly inheritance uh, which is reserved for us okay so there's two things here the inheritance is reserved in heaven for us but meanwhile we are kept guarded for that inheritance that's two things now I'll give you a little illustration of this for example you may book uh, uh, your uh, airline uh, flight uh, reserve it online and, and it's reserved there for you your your name you're given a confirmation code and and so on so your your seat is reserved on the plane you check in online it's reserved on the plane but say on the way to the airport you're in a car accident a car accident god forbid or you have a flat tire or you get caught up in traffic or whatever and you don't make it then the the uh, the seats that's reserved for you, uh, you'll, you'll lose it. And, and this is the, the, the two-sided aspect of this. Our inheritance is reserved for us in heaven, but we're not going to have a flat tire along the way. Okay, We're not going to lose it down here through some misdeed of ours. We are kept guarded by the, it says here, uh, by the power of God. He will bring us. It's our faithful, ever-living high priest that will bring us through. Grace saves us, grace keeps us, and grace will introduce us to glory. Therefore, the, the life that we have as believers will never perish. It's the life of Christ. May the Lord encourage you with this little meditation of the day. If you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you have eternal life, and you shall never perish. Amen.